a cult favorite. Two things namely tech and design. But that was known as the OG of SUVs. They're telling us this is the big daddy of SUVs. We want to bring you a tech geek's perspective on tech today. Now we will get you inside, tell you what the Tech Geek's perspective is all about and tell you what it drives like. Now, especially when you enter your new car, is the first two things that greet you. And in this car, it is this really cool new Mahindra logo, which we've seen on the XUV700 as well, and the infotainment system. Of course, there are two screens, one in between the two analog clusters here with your MID, giving you all sorts of information with hard buttons over here. You can get the fuel economy, the range, what that trip is like. And then there's other features as well. If you have a look at this, you have digital speed, vehicle info that shows up over here. A really neat, well-integrated digital sort of setup in between these two analog clusters. And then you have your settings, the alert history. But basically, this is nothing like the old Scorpio from 20 years ago. Of course, technology has caught up with the Scorpio N and we are impressed with the first screen. The second screen, which is the 8-inch infotainment unit over here, is quite good when it comes to touch response. Even the OS works quite well for us. At a car at this price point, I think this does a good job. But when you actually get in to the nitty gritties, is the devil lying in the details? And that's what we want to talk about. Look, it's packed with features. You're greeted with radio, music and navigation. Now, as we speak, and at the time of doing this review, it comes with Android Auto. It also comes with Apple CarPlay. Now, Apple CarPlay is still a work in progress. Android Auto is wireless at this point, but that's also something which I guess by the time of delivery will be a perfect finished product. At this point, it works. When it works, it works really well. It actually gives you a message out there telling you that this is, of course, a pre-production unit. I'll tell you some fun things and there's a Tech Today, India Today plug over here as well. Spoiler alert, the minute you swipe up, you have all sorts of options. Add folder, you can also take photos from your camera, which then gets saved to gallery. There's climate control, connected apps, a front view camera, you have a horoscope, just dial. And then look at this, you have India Today. See, the best channel will always find its way in the big daddy of SUVs. And it's fantastic, I mean, honestly, I didn't know this came as a surprise to me, although we do Tech Today over here. And this calls for a separate review altogether. A lot of Tech Today updates as well, but just in case you want to listen to the live news and let's see who's on air right now. You hit live news. Your murmurs coming in. It also gets classified into top news, auto, this review as well, business, business today, and then tech, of course, as well. So all of these things are packed into a really good intuitive app. I'm not just saying it, it's really easy to use. You know, the biggest difference in the Scorpio N and the Scorpio of old is the fact that it is technology loaded. All the things that it can do, you can control, of course, the air conditioning of the car. You can also remote start, stop the engine, like a lot of the top cars now. I mean, I think every manufacturer includes some of these things, but now you can do it in the new Scorpio as well. So a thumbs up there as well. Of course, you can use Android Auto for all the apps that it comes with and it's wireless, so that helps. But the music, now that is a pleasant surprise in this car with the Sony 12 speaker system with immersive sound. My God, I have never seen, well, an SUV in this price range, of course, which gives you that sort of performance. I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek if you want one. It is incredibly loud. Well, that is mind-boggling sound output. But what makes it better is if you're an audio file and then you head into the settings, hit audio, this is where the tech geek can come alive. It has all sorts of sound profiles, stage, if you want it to be this sort of a stage-like performance coming from the front of the car, party, if it's a little more surround sound, then there's breezy, there's 3D, immersive 3D, and then also sound field positioning, where do you want it to come from? Where are the people in the car? This is crazy, 
because of the customizations coupled with the quality of the Sony system. Even people sitting in the last row have been bouncing and partying to all that music that we've been playing. You know, we were at the Amazon event in Las Vegas just a couple of weeks ago and we've seen what they're doing with their voice assistant. It can actually make your life a whole lot easier and it's not just a gimmick. There are interesting things that you can do even in this car as well. And to see that the Scorpio has a sunroof, it's not panoramic, but we're not nitpicking. It does have a sunroof and it's quite a big one at that too. A lot of light can come in to the cabin and you can control it hands-free. Have a look. Alexa, open the sunroof. Okay. Well, there you go. It's pouring and we have to finish this review on tech today. So, Alexa, close the sunroof. Okay. And before we wrap up this personal assistant review, we have to ask her the inevitable question, which we also ask the big boss at Amazon, Rohit Prasad, about these personal assistants. Alexa, do you like Siri? I'm partial to all AIs. Well, she is. Alexa, do you like me? I like you as a friend. Fair enough. I've been friend zoned by her, but that's a good thing. That means tech geeks are welcome as friends in the Scorpio N. And I've had a fantastic time with this vehicle. I know that there are things like the XUV 700's ADAS feature and stuff like that which could be included. But this is a body on frame platform. Let's think of this as somewhere in between the Thar and the XUV 700. This is the car that comes in between. It's a lot more practical than the Thar as much as I reluctantly like to admit. And it's still the big daddy of SUVs. Now this was the Tech Geek's perspective on this particular car. Tech Geek check pass. Vibe check certainly pass. But how did it pass the vibe check? You have to log on to the Business Today and India Today pages and check out our full review. We're not going to give you an automotive perspective because there's a bunch of reviews like that already. What we want to give you is the true Tech Geek's perspective and the real user experience. What's it like on the road, off the road, up a mountain, on the highway? What's the real fuel efficiency like? And the real experience when you sit so high up above the road? Is there any body roll? Stuff that matters to you and I, that's what you'll find on our social media pages on Business Today and India Today. And of course, the real user experience will always be available to you Tech Today style. Well, clearly we've been having a lot of fun with the Scorpio N outdoors, but now it's time to have some fun indoors with a global unboxing. Before we get to that, if you enjoyed our Tech Geek's perspective on that SUV and you want a genuine user experience, then log on to the Business Today socials because there we'll tell you how we actually felt driving that car in all other aspects. If you need to make an informed purchase decision, then that's the place where you have to go. And now it's time for the exclusive unboxing of the M2 MacBook Air here on Tech Today. Let's unbox it. Evolution is a really cool thing. I'm smiling because I have in my left hand the M2 MacBook Air and in my right hand I have the M1 MacBook Air. In 2020, if you told me this is what Apple's design language is all about, I'd be quite pleased. It looks good, it's slick, and you know what? It's a little curved on the edges, it's all right. But then all of a sudden, this is an exclusive on Tech Today. The M2 MacBook Air, it looks so much more rectangular, it's sharper. Honestly, it just looks like you've taken two iPads and you've put them together and sandwiched them together. I'm telling you, it's all about convergence. The day that this comes with a touch screen is when that smile will be even wider with 32 teeth. But let's get to this particular device. If you open it up, it is a slightly bigger display technically because what they've done with the bezels is that they've given you now a 13.6 inch display. So it's a lot more vivid, 500 nits of brightness and boy, there's a lot more under the hood as well. M1, M1 Ultra, M2 now, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro. If you're on the market for a new laptop, especially a MacBook, it can get very confusing nowadays. That's why we want to break it down for you. This, of course, is an unboxing and initial impressions video because we were so excited to share the MacBook Air M2 with you. But 
there'll also be a detailed review on the Business Today website and of course on the Business Today socials. But what's interesting about this is this is a 256 gig version. Of course, it comes with all the good things from the M1 and then a lot more as well. For example, a small bit on design that I find interesting. This, of course, is the starlight color. Of course, there's a midnight color, which is very popular, but I've heard that's a fingerprint magnet. So we've stuck to this one, but I'll tell you a little bit about Apple. And this gives you a good insight into what they believe design is all about and, and how colors can change your whole perspective on something as elementary as your daily laptop. Well, this being of one color, the starlight color, this is the MagSafe cable and it is back on the MacBook Air. Thank God for that. This MagSafe cable is blending in with exactly the same color. If you get the midnight version, then this would be midnight color. You get the space gray version, you get the drift. They've given you matching MagSafe cables and that's a big deal in Tech Geeks Paradise. The display, if you compare it to the M1 I was showing you earlier, is slightly bigger. This one gives you nearly 13.6 inches. That's because the bezels are a lot thinner. So it's a lot more immersive in terms of the display. Yes, in terms of technology, it's not very different. It comes with the notch, a lot like the new MacBook Pros. We had to get used to the notch. I don't think you should complain about this notch, although the earlier MacBooks just had a tiny camera punch hole cut out. But this comes in with a much better camera. For those of us working from home, this now has a 1080p FaceTime HD camera. That sounds very elementary in a world where we're talking about 4K, 8K and whatnot. But the truth is that when you're working from home, you're doing a Zoom call or a FaceTime call or anything. If you need to use this as your daily driver, as a productivity device, then you need a good camera. Also, it does help that this will soon come with continuity camera on the new Mac OS and iOS updates. So you can use your iPhone like I'd shown you in the earlier shows after WWDC. What's also interesting about this product is that it's quite light. And honestly, I love the design. I think this is something that you will quite fancy. You can see a lot of people sitting at a coffee shop or at a cafe and working on this. Honestly, it's getting nearly as nifty as my iPad setup. If I had a 13 inch iPad versus this, it would be almost the same form factor, except for the fact that I can't touch this screen. Now the new M2 MacBook Air also comes with improved sound and a better microphone as well. It comes with a new quad speaker setup which is quite neatly tucked in out there on the sides and a triple mic array with beam forming audio. Now, I haven't tested this on a Zoom call or a FaceTime call, but I'm guessing that that sort of tweak would again make your work from home experience a whole lot better. Let me add a small rider to that. This is a great productivity device. You can use it for all the usual tasks. Also some basic video editing, maybe not 8K, but for your basic YouTube videos. And when I send the producers pieces of this show, I can use this as well. This doesn't come with a fan much like the M1, but their thermal management systems are so developed on their Apple Silicon, which is M1 and M2, that you don't need a fan on the air devices. The pros do come with a fan, but maybe that's because they think that's for more heavy duty work. This does the job quite easily. There is a small caveat. If you're in one of those sort of jobs where you need multiple screens, maybe video editing, maybe financial markets, some sort of research. If you need two screens, you can only attach the new M2 MacBook Air to one external display. So if that matters to you, well, you've heard it here on Tech Today. Well, so it's time for our verdict on our initial impressions video of the M2 MacBook Air. Now, it's a fantastic device. It looks great. A lot of new features, but Apple for some reason has kept the M1 still available on the App Store and it costs nearly 20,000 rupees lesser than this. This starts at 120,000 rupees. This one is a little under a lakh. So that's the real question now. For most of us, 95%, maybe 99% of us, the M1 can do it all. It was well ahead of its time when Apple came up with silicon on the M1, much better than most Windows laptops. And honestly, there are a few upgrades in the M2, but let's break it down for you. If you want the new design, it looks great, the new colors, a new sound system, a 1080p FaceTime camera, this comes with 720p, and of course, the M2 chipset versus the M1 chipset. Slightly more technical things as memory and stuff have also been upgraded and a slightly better display at 13.6 inches with 500 nits of brightness. That 500 nits is a crucial figure because it's a lot brighter than the M1 in practice. Then you should go for the new M2 MacBook Air. But if you want to save some extra bucks, then the M1 does it all. So I think that would make it a lot easier. But they call this one of the world's fastest selling laptops, the MacBook Air range. And honestly, 
Just like we were showing you earlier with the Scorpio in a previous video, the new Scorpio really does live up to all the hype. And I think the M. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. You are watching India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. You are watching India Today. Welcome back to Tech Today, guys. I'm your host, Ayush Alavadi. Now, you've seen the Scorpio N, a Tech Geek's perspective. You've also seen the new MacBook Air M2. And of course, this is something you've been excited about, just like me. But now it's time for a special unboxing and review. But this is a little different. The Google Nest is here in India. And of course, we have it on Tech Today. They've tied up, of course, with Tata to get you a cool home security solution. But is it a true bang for your buck? Well, let's find out. Home security cameras have become a necessity in every household now and Google is now offering their Google Nest Cam in India for the first time. This is a home security camera which you can use indoors or outdoors and it gives you the option of running on battery as well. It has a fairly interesting form factor and we're going to get into everything else that it offers along with that because it has a lot of features. The camera is very, very simple to set up. All you basically need is obviously you need the camera in your hand, you need a Google Home app installed on your device and you need a Wi-Fi connection. Once you have these things in place, just download the Google Home app and after that you need to add this as a device. Now the one that I have with me in my hands is one which you can place indoors and outdoors and it functions on battery as well. Now how effective that battery life is, that remains a question because they claim that it can go on for days and days together but it will totally depend upon how this camera is going to capture movement around it. So you get two options for that. Either you can have it running 24 seven or you can choose that this camera will only start recording when there is motion. Now in terms of motion, it is very, very effective. Even if there is an insect which comes into the frame, it will start recording. It can recognize humans entering the frame. It can recognize animals. It can recognize headlights. It can recognize cars. So that is an option that you as an owner can decide. Apart from that, you get a 130 degree field of view 
and you get 1080p HD view when you're viewing the footage live. So now we come to the next big question. Usually whenever we set up CCTV cameras, you know, there is always a big hard drive that it comes along with. Here obviously you don't get any hard drive, this is what you get. Now the footage that it captures is stored on the cloud. For that you need to go in for a Nest Aware subscription which is a one-time uh, purchase for the entire year. You can decide between 30 days of storage space or 60 days of storage space and accordingly you need to pay up for it. Now it basically needs a Wi-Fi connection to function. In case there is no electricity at home and the Wi-Fi shuts down, what do you do? The camera has an inbuilt ability to capture about one hour of events which it will store locally and as soon as the Wi-Fi is accessible to the camera again, it will upload it to the cloud. Let's talk about the form factor that it comes with. Now, they call it an indoor and outdoor camera. But my concern is this, would I want a camera outside my house which can easily be detached from its base? I mean, if someone can easily just pull it out and run with it. That is one concern me or anybody who wishes to invest in this will have. So I will be more comfortable placing it inside the house, personally. Apart from that, it is white and can get slightly dirty. I would have preferred more color options. Overall, the camera is equipped with a lot of features and a lot of technology and all you need is that Google Home app after which you control the camera in totality using just that app. As far as the price is concerned, this one costs about 12,000 rupees and the storage that you will need to subscribe to the Nest Aware subscription will be over and above that, which is a one-time amount for the entire year. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Was it the Scorpio that caught your fancy or the new M2 MacBook Air? or the new Google Nest, which is finally launched in India and we had it here first on Tech Today. Please do let us know, do write to us on our socials and until next week, this is your host Ayush Alabadi saying, Adios.